Hurricane Milton, making its way across Florida, has obviously been set to be one of the worst hurricanes in a generation. We'll have to see. It has been downgraded over the last few hours, but that doesn't mean it still can't be bad or pick back up to a Category 5. But there's been lots of reporting on this hurricane, and I don't think there's a point really going over all the details, but I do want to focus on climate change and capitalism and a little bit of conspiracy. Uh, I want you to watch uh, this clip from a TikToker, an academic uh, called Chris Kunzler, you may know him, uh, who was discussing the same topic earlier on TikTok today, and I found the clip very interesting. Hurricane Milton proves that capitalism is a doomed ideology that simply does not work for human beings, because this is not just some random natural disaster that came out of nowhere. As the experts have been telling us for decades now, climate change is going to worsen the intensity of storms like this and also increase their frequency because Hurricane Milton is so intense because of rising water temperatures and capitalism has absolutely no way to address this. In a society that is organised around the idea that we are first of all isolated particulars who should be concerned with our own individual accumulation of commodities that one day in the future we will get to enjoy and also the organising principle of profit that it is better to do this than work towards the betterment of society mean that there is no way to address the climate crisis because the incredibly tough sanctions that are required on oil companies and others who cause damage to the climate that cannot just be avoided like they are now need to be put in place. But of course, capitalist society that is more concerned with profit than human life is never going to be able to do that. And if you listen to what people are saying on the ground in Tampa, Florida, it proves my point even even more, because you will hear so many people talking about the 10 hour traffic jams. And the reasons for these is because America is a country which is so car centric and lacks the infrastructure for public transport. And then you have all of the people who are forced to stay in an area where it is quite likely that they will die simply because they don't have the means to evacuate. Or you have examples like the guy that everyone is calling Lieutenant Dan, who says that he will not leave his boat because if he does and he loses it, he will not have a home and he will have to go back to being homeless. So the only answer is fundamental change in society because disastrous events like this are not going anywhere. They are only going to keep on getting worse. And this is not just a thing that's happening in America. It's going on all over the world. In 2023, during summer, the Middle East was so hot that they were having power cuts and that food was spoiling in the fridge and people were basically unable to live. And so what we need is a universal response to the climate crisis, where everyone across the world says that profit is less important than the disaster that is coming, because I'm sure that there will be some in society who are rich enough to bunker down and batten down the hatches and pretend that this isn't happening. But even for many people who are well off, this is going to affect you very, very soon. Now, the reason I played that video is because, you know, I could have wrote that in a script and rented the same way but i thought chris did such a good job out of it so i thought you know let's just play his three minute video very quickly but yeah we have capitalists every day lobbying and fighting against the interests of this planet its people and its future we saw how the tories switched up their election tactics to try and stay in power and during the by-election I, I think it was uxbridge and south ricelip seat last year boris johnson's old seat i think um uh, they rallied against stuff like ULES and green investment and policy to help mitigate the effects of climate change just so they could stay in power. Uh, and then not only this, we have to battle against conspiracy theorists with people accelerating like bizarre conspiracy theories in America right now that the government is using cloud seeding technology to make storms worse and create them. And even some people believe that they have the technology to control their path. Uh, a few days ago, we had the US House representative, our favorite, Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeting this out. They can control the weather. We actually don't know who they are. Uh, perhaps she's referring to the government, or perhaps she's driving into her anti-Semitic conspiracy theories again, as she once did say on social media that Jewish space lasers were causing the forest fires in California. Uh, um, Curtis, <laughs> where do we even go with all of this? <sighs> I, what I love about these people, Marjorie Taylor Greene, 
MAGA Republicans, general Republicans, is that they'll believe in every single conspiracy theory apart from climate change. OK, they'll believe <laughs> that the weather is being controlled probably by the Democrats, maybe Jewish people. I don't know. Half of them don't know what they mean. They can't tell you. If you ask them, who do you mean by they? They go, oh, uh, uh, the people, the woke people, whatever, um, because they have no material analysis about absolutely anything. It's insane to hear. Um, but actually, uh, there is there is a reason behind this, maybe consciously or subconsciously. So the the defense of capitalism has moved through different stages. The first stage was, let's you know, say the golden era of capitalism, maybe just after 50s, 60s. And the argument was capitalism is a great system because it uh, enhances technological advancement. It improves people's lives, their material well-being. It's the system of freedom. That was the first argument. And then after a couple of decades, people were going, hold on a second, this doesn't really seem like a good system. The things that you're promising isn't happening. So in order for capitalism to remain, relevant, uh, to, to remain relevant, excuse me, the proponents of capitalism had to switch up. They then changed it to a moral argument. Instead of saying, well, capitalism is this wonderful, wonderful thing, they now say, well, the reason why capitalism isn't working for you is because it's your fault. It's because you're lazy. You're not working hard enough. You're not smart enough. And actually, we're going to individualize this issue because obviously they want to distract you and say, OK, the system that elevates certain people and pushes down others, that cannot be exposed because then people will look at the system holistically and be like, this doesn't seem like a very good system. So they move to a new mode of narrativization, which is it's completely your fault. And that's essentially being the dominant narrative for decades, that was obviously pushed through Thatcherism, neoliberalism, uh, the individualization. But even that now is starting to crumble because people are, are asking the very prevalent question and the correct one, which is, well, I'm working my ass off and yet I'm not getting anywhere. What about nurses and doctors who are saving people's lives, who are working 50, 60, 70 hour weeks, and yet they're not getting anywhere, yet someone can do one single vox pop and then gets their own podcast. Yes, I'm talking about Hot Tour Girl. And these, these things, you know, we're not living in a meritocracy. So that argument is beginning to fail. So how do you keep capitalism uh, relevant? That is where you then end up in the conspiracy. And that's where you're seeing people like Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene and others say, well, do you know what? The hurricanes, it's not to do with capitalism, even though it is. What we're going to say is, it's actually the Democrats controlling the weather or whatever it is. Um, it's a kind of a, a very uh, poignant kind of, kind of piece of rhetoric because it's essentially um, a metaphor for uh, the late stage capitalism, that, no, that late stage capitalism, sorry, is on its death now. And it's kicking and screaming and, it, and it's not going quietly. And that's where you're seeing more and more of these extreme conspiracy, crazy ideas because capitalism isn't going to go lightly, and it is, it's, it's um, succumbing to its own internal contradictions. Yeah, there's, there's one other point that I want to bring up when it comes to the conspiracy side of things as well, because I think Florida is actually an interesting place to talk about. When we look back at the pandemic, right, it was Florida was one of the only states who was like, no lockdowns, no anything, you do whatever you want, because many, many people also believe is that because they couldn't see this virus, it can't hurt them. And many people believe, you know, it wasn't real. It was uh, a million conspiracies were there. But obviously, you know, most Floridians have evacuated. Some haven't, but most have because they've lived through the experience of what it's like to live under a storm um, and they will react to it. Um, and, you know, we're, this storm could be bad. It might not be as bad. You know, many people live through the, you know, the disaster that was Hurricane Katrina. And I'm, the point that I'm getting at is like how much of in their face does it have to be? How mm. bad is it going to have to get before we have enough people who can come together to actually make this change? Because right now, we are on the other side where I think most people believe in climate change, right? We are there. But the actual willingness to actually really do something about it is still not quite there. We still live quite passively in this system. Like, yeah, some of us have probably changed habits, right? You know, I don't eat as much dairy as I used to. Some people have gone vegan. Loads of other stuff. People are walking more. But that's not the change that we actually need more of. It needs to be on the industry side of things, right? 
we don't have that willpower to change that system yet. And I'm just really afraid that in the combination with that lack of willpower with the conspiracies, it's simply just going to be too late. Or am I being too, you know, doomsday-ish? Well, I've, I saw this really, really good quote, actually. And it, uh, if I can remember, I think it was, um, you know, you, you look, you're watching all online of these videos of all these disasters. It, they're far away. But one day, it, or, or, so you're watching all these disasters, but it's going to get closer and closer and closer until you're the one filming it yourself. And I thought that was a really good quote because that's essentially what it is. Right now, yes, there's a lack of urgency because it's a far away problem. The hurricane um, in the US, well, it's miles away. All the issues of climate change when it comes to the global south, where they've been hit really hard. Yeah, it's bad. We don't like it, but it's so far away. But one day, okay, you watching at home, anyone, it's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. It's going to happen to all of us. One day, your house is going to be flooded. Your belongings are going to be destroyed um, because it's going to get to the point that it affects everyone. The problem is when we get to that stage, and by the way, that's a very real reality for people right now. We've had floods in this country, right? What I'm saying is when it eventually happens to everyone, that might be the point where it's too late. Now, there are many people, many scientists who've given us different dates of the so-called point of no return. And the point of no return essentially means we hit a certain point and climate change is no longer fully reversible. We just need to mitigate the worst effects of it. Some have said it's 2035. I've seen earlier. If you ask me, I feel like we've probably already hit that. And actually, we can't reverse uh, climate change completely. Now, here's another really interesting thing that scientists, climate science scientists, have been downplaying the climate emergency. Now, you're probably thinking, what? I mean, they've been you know, ringing the alarm bells of uh, the climate catastrophe. The reason why they've been downplaying it is because of climate skeptics or denialists have been accusing scientists of being too extreme or overblowing the effects of climate change. And in response, they've actually moderated their language. So what a lot of the scientists are saying, it's actually worse, which is worrying. Now, I don't want to be a pessimist. You seem like you're maybe a bit pessimistic too. The thing that really worries me is as an anti-capitalist, right, I don't think we're going to see the end of capitalism in my lifetime. I really, really hope I'm wrong, by the way. But with if you take the climate change context out of it, at least we had time. We could say, okay, even if it takes 200 years to move to a, a system of um, uh, abundance, we leave behind the, the scarcity nature of capitalism, everybody gets what they want, we have time to do it. There's no imp impending disaster. Unfortunately, with climate change, we don't have time. We really need to transform our economic and political system. Because, yes, the driving force behind climate change is being accelerated by capitalism, and it cannot be fixed with something that is being dri driven from. So you do need to transform our systems to a post-capitalist society. But it feels like we're not even at that debate yet. I mean, we have a Labour government that is looking at cutting benefits for people. We're looking at the fact that Donald Trump may win a second term, and our debate is so, to so far to the right. We're so behind that we're not even thinking about post-capitalism. Us leftists are mostly talking about mitigating the worst ills of capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. But that has been an argument we've had for so, so long. I thought we'd be past it, and we should be, but we're not. So it's, um, I don't want to be a pessimist, but this impending disaster doesn't seem like it's being really and truly addressed on the scale and the urgency that we need. I'm not coming to the comments just yet, but I have just seen Becca in the chat as referencing the movie Don't Look Up. Um, and if you haven't seen it, uh, the entire movie is just about how these scientists are screaming at the entire world saying literally the world's going to end um, and they don't do anything about it because of the exact reasons that we've just been talking about. It's a really good movie. It's almost comedic in a way. Uh, and I'd really recommend anybody go and watch it. Um, but this is kind of still where we're at, right? Um, where... The one thing that always frustrates me as well, and this ties it back into capitalism, right? People, my dad, for example, will be the type of person who will say, oh, in the 80s, they only said we had 20 years left. And when you mm. actually look back at who was saying that in the 80s, it would be some shitty article in the Daily Mail 
referencing some niche scientist for some country, you know, 15,000 miles away, um, when actually there was good data at that time suggesting, uh, you know, timeframes and damage done. But, you know, these media outlets, these tabloids have damaged multiple generations of people to sow these seeds of doubt for their own capitalistic mm. purposes, to sell newspapers, because the amount of times... I hear people from my dad's generation and a little bit younger and a little bit older say, oh, well, they said everything was going to be done by the 2000s. Everything was going to be over in the 90s. Oh, they said 10 years ago we'd be, you know, underwater by 2020. And it's like, no, it's because obviously they lack, obviously, many critical thinking skills. But, you know, I don't want to go after the generations. Mm -hmm. We've done the generational <laughs> more stuff before. But it's so true. So many layers uh, of issues have been put into our society and that genuinely again comes back down to power it comes down to capitalism well, i mean like i, I just want to say that the the famous quote we all, we all like to say from mark fisher is that you know we can imagine the end of the world before we imagine the end of capitalism which is true but another flaw with human beings is we actually can't really imagine the end of the world we can see it mm. visually because we will watch movies about it but there's something in our, in maybe in its uh, innate human nature that we cannot really imagine the end of the world. So we often will make excuses like, oh, they said this was going to happen. They said that was going to happen. They said all these, uh, you know, cities would be underwater. And it's like, okay, but you need to understand that not everything happens at the same time. Okay. Uh, richer uh, Western nations obviously have better equipment to deal with the extreme weather changes. But think of the global south. There are already potentially millions, uh, well, hundreds of thousands at least, uh, mm. climate refugees, right? That's a reality for these people now. But obviously, if you're sat in your comfortable home, you can't see it. And obviously, we contextualize everything that's four feet in front of us. It's very hard to have uh, you know, a worldview that extends beyond our own immediate sort of sphere, which is very difficult to do. Um, also, what's uh, uh, important to note is that many... Um, oil companies uh, actually did a, did a lot of their own research about the effects of what they were doing on climate change and found actually there was a lot of negative effects of what they were doing and they were looking at alternative ways to help for more clean energy. A lot of these um, companies found some good methods and what they did was pattern it and then shelve it. So a lot of oil companies absolutely know the effects of man-made climate change from them and they mm. knew about it, but they tried to hide it from the public because it would hurt their profits. So the people who are climate skeptics or denialists, people like Richard Tice, who, by the way, the oil in industry thanks you, right? You need to understand mm. the oil industry themselves know that climate change is absolutely real. They just don't care. They just want to make a profit. And you're just their lackeys who believe into this bullshit idea that climate change is not real, it's not man-made. It absolutely is. Support independent media. Support social justice that's there on social media. Thank you. Turn left.